Hello everyone, and this is my review for TNA Impact Wrestling on August 4th, 2016. And actually, I will go off and say right off the bat that this was a fairly entertaining uh, episode of Impact. Like, you had decent storyline build-ups, uh, you had good matches inside of there to go along with everything, and I found this Impact to be... A relatively good show. Let's go ahead and start off with what they uh, what they had been doing from the week before with this whole Rosemary thing with Bram. They were talking inside this barn and everything, and, then, and of course, this was the continuation of it. And of, of course, she goes through her entire origin story, why she became Rosemary, and everything like that. And it just turns out to be a full on ploy to try to capture. Uh, Bram to try to get him into decay or something like that. Like it turns out that the story was like, oh, her heart was broken on Valentine's Day, and Bram's like, oh, well, that's happened with about everybody, everybody else. And then they get, then he gets attacked by decay, uh, by decay, and he gets put into a trunk along with Rosemary. And as decay decides to drive off, so it was like they're all in it together the entire time, and uh, interesting. Interesting plot point, I guess, to, to it, and we'll see where they go with it. I, I feel like there's going to be a third part to this next week or something in that sense, so we'll see where they go with it uh, down the road here with that entire thing. Like I said, the, these type of segments have been very interesting on TNA Impact. If you've been used to them on Lucha Underground, uh, then it's nothing really new, but like to people who haven't watched it, it's a very interesting uh, style of them telling their stories down uh, down the road that, uh, here, and it will be interesting to see how it plays off when they are in the impact zone to go along with it. Because are they actually showing these vignettes during the entire uh, inside of these tapings or anything like that? So when these stories come to the actual in ring side, will people really care about them at that time? So again, that's something we you have to wait and see. On uh, something like that down the road here. Um, other th other things that happened. Well, you had you had them start off the show with an EC3 and Michael Bennett um, promo. You had a quick bit from Drew Galloway. You didn't see anything else from him afterward. It was uh, something that happened right after, like from the match from last week, where he's furious at EC3 for getting involved again, costing him the match, and he was like, and he says, like, you want to know what I'm gonna do to him? And it's like he he wanted to say something, but it's like, no, this could be used as evidence. So something down the road is gonna happen between EC3 and Drew Galloway. Uh, doesn't happen on this show, which you would have figured something would have happened here. But I'll talk about a little bit uh, more about that later on, and um, uh, later on when I talk about the main event, which is that Bound for Glory playoffs. Uh, the first match that they had for the night was the King of the Mountain title with James Storm going up against Eli Drake, uh, and the match was an aspect that you know Eli Drake's putting his title on the line, but. Uh, James Storm is basically putting up his identity. So uh, it was just his identity that he was putting up. He wasn't putting up his full career, which is what I was expecting from last week. But no, he, like if he loses, he's not allowed to use the country music. He's not allowed to drink beer, no boo boozer cruiser, uh, cruiser and everything like that. He wouldn't have to necessarily retire, but it was like his identity would go away uh, in, in that sense of everything. Now, as for the match itself... I thought this was a really, really good match. These two really, uh, it, it's really hard to say, like, this is by far the best match I've seen Eli Drake have the entire time I've seen him in TNA. Like, he's always been a great talker, but he hadn't been so good in the ring. Uh, he showed off a lot more here and what he can do and everything in that sense. These two, like I said, had great promos in the past. Uh, and it showed off even more in this match. I, I thoroughly enjoyed this match. The win comes with uh, them doing the super, uh, the uh, Shelton Benjamin, Shawn Michaels spot where Eli Drake is the role of Shelton Benjamin. He does the springboard off the ropes, and he gets caught with a super kick in the face via James Storm. Very good way to end the match. And by the way, horrible announcing for that spot. Uh, I like they did not emphasize that enough 
in any way, shape, or form. It did not come off all that well in the terms of the announcers. I'm not a big fan of these announcers. Uh, then again, I haven't been a big fan of a lot of wrestling announcers as of late, so it is what it is in that, ca- in that case. At least on Josh Matthews' side, I think Pope did a little bit better of a job on that one. Uh, but I digress away from all of that. Um, up next was, you, you had a quick backstage segment from Gail Kim, Allie, and Maria, and they were saying, I was like, okay, Gail's trying to figure out who she's supposed to face next. Uh, Allie's kind of being her normal self in there, and Maria's trying to, like, make her be a little bit more quiet and everything like that. Um, and eventually it gets announced that um, Mar- Maria announces, like, you know who you're going to face? You're going to face Allie. And it's like, okay, and everybody's like, kind of weirded out by that. By that. I was like, yeah, everyone was okay. And I was like, okay, so they get all out for the match. And then, of course, Maria's like, yeah, I forgot one thing. You're also facing Sienna. So they have a handicap match. Um, not a bad handicap match here. Uh, your typical way of going, uh, like I said, you didn't feel like they were going to end this particular storyline within like a two-week time span. So Gail Kim goes over here with a uh, with the aspect of Sienna knocking out Allie instead of knocking out Gail. Uh, so you had that uh, that aspect to pl- uh, play along with it. Uh, so you could cause dissension, anything like that. We'll, we'll see where, where they actually go with it, or if it's just like that one-time occurrence, and it's just to go, fully go with the storyline of Gail having to um, go through the knockouts division to get another title shot down the road here. Uh, Overall, decent match. Nothing re- like out of the matches I saw tonight. This was probably the most disappointing, uh, disappointing match, or at least n- the most underwhelming in, in the sense of everything. Even the uh, even the handicap match was with Mahomet Sharon Grado with the Tribunal was a bit better here uh, than I was expecting. Then again, they did kind of have this like. Superman style thing for Muhammad Muhammad Shira that he just ran wild over the tribunal to garner the uh, to garner the victory. I've never been a big fan of um the handicap match. Like you have two instances here of it in the same night. You have the handicap match. You have a three on two and a two on one, and the person on the opposite side wins. I've never been a huge fan of that. I get it in the Gail Kim side because they need to further the sto- uh, further the storyline for her trying to get another knockouts title shot. Where is this for these guys here? Like, where's the storyline going? Uh, it really hasn't been going much of anywhere, and. Not that many people really care about it, to be honest with you. Uh, th- at least I don't. That's my personal opinion. I, and I feel like a lot more people are on, on that side here. Then again, um, Mahalo Shira doesn't really do too much for a lot of people. And I know Grado's pop- popular in other areas, but I just don't. I, I just not a big fan of his. In, in any way, shape, or form. I don't really find them all that thoroughly entertaining. Then again, maybe it's because I've seen the gimmick done so many times in the past that, you know, the factor that he's doing it really, it, it, it means nothing in the end. Uh, uh, it means nothing in the end to me because I've seen it and enjoyed it in the past, and yet we got another character doing it here, uh, doing it here. So it is what it is in that case. Uh, the next thing I wanted to talk about was the oh the thing uh, one thing actually three more things to talk about because right after that James Storm and Eli Drake match James Storm is of course celebrating he gets interrupted by Lashley and Lashley's coming out there is like not here to fight at least not yet <laughs> in that in that sense and these two cut a pretty darn good promo like Lashley's got, has really gotten good on the mic. Uh, like, if you would have seen his earlier days in WWE, he was, like, god-awful. Like, here and now, he's a lot better on the microphone. Um, and these two cut a promo about the aspect of, you know, Bobby Lashley wants all the titles, and James Storm has what he wants, but also, Storm, but Lashley has what Storm wants, which is the world title. So, so the same offer gets uh, made again for... Uh, a title versus title match. So all three titles are going to be on the line next week. 
uh, to go along with everything here. Basically, another winner's ta a winner take all in the terms of the singles title, and they're trying to really build this up as you know Lashley being the most dominant force. He's trying to garner every single title and everything he and it's like no one can really stop him until you know I guess whomever does does stop him at, at that point in time. But overall, really good promo from the two. I thoroughly enjoyed this portion of the show to go along with it. Uh, and yeah, nothing more that can really be said about that. That was just a really good portion of the show, and we'll continue on from there. Up next, I wanted to talk about the um, the Matt Hardy. And I guess I'll play along with it and start calling him Brother Nero. No, I won't do. <laughs> I won't do that. No, the Matt and Jeff Hardy spot. Uh, the Matt and Jeff Hardy spot um, with Matt Hardy, of course, cutting a promo saying it's like he, he's got to punish Jeff for his transactions. He cost him the the match against EC3 the week before and everything on that aspect. So his aspect is it's like you know he's still playing off of Jeff being. Quote unquote, his obsolete, oh, he calls him the obsolete mule and his money making machine uh, for the Hardy, uh, for the brand because he owns the rights to the Hardy brand now in the terms of the storyline. Uh, so he wants to, he wants to punish Jeff by making him go on an odyssey of regaining the tag team titles that they never lost. So, like they're playing off of this aspect of when he originally had his leg broken and, um, they had to forfeit the tag team titles at that time. So you, they were playing off of that. And now, but the aspect is, is that uh, Matt Hardy's trying to put like little rules in his place. Like not only are you going to have to go with, like their quote unquote tag team, but they, Jeff has to do everything on his own. And like for this match, he even says like, you can't do any high flying or anything like that. Though you do see a couple spots like where he does the springboard drop. Uh, that kind of run up the rope type drop kick. He does do a little bit in there, but once he goes for the swan time uh, against these guys, and this was not a badly done match either. It, it, again, it, it was again like a handicap style match, though technically Matt was legal in the match to go along with it. Uh, so Matt Hardy tries to get in the way, and Jeff just kind of jumps over Matt Hardy to do the swan taunt on uh, on the opponent. And this, of course, infuriates Matt. And he did something outside. Like, you know, every time the people were s s trying to chant for Jeff, uh, call him Jeff Hardy, uh, Matt was kidding on the microphone, chastising the fans. Like, this is not his name. This is not his name. Like, this, oh my God. I can't believe how much this Matt Hardy character is actually thoroughly enjoyable. Uh, just in the terms of how over the top he is with it, uh, and you know how much he runs with it too because he does it in interviews as well he does all this stuff inside of the interviews to go along with it and it, it just portrays to a guy who's playing the character and he is living the character at the moment to go along with it like it, that is him in a nutshell at this point in time uh, so he even has a little spot, like obviously probably a plant, where he pulls a fan over the over the railing as they're getting chastised at the uh, at ringside, and he bites his ear. Uh, so you have a little spot where like he has blood on, on his mouth, and like he, he just comes off crazy in every way, shape, or form here. And like I said, after the swan time, Matt gets infuriated. They does a high flying spot, uh, hits him with a twist of fate, tags himself in, and gets the pin to go along with it. Overall, really good segment. I thoroughly enjoyed this one. It, Matt Hardy really makes these segments. Like I've never been a big fan of Jeff Hardy in the terms of everything, uh, terms of everything, but Matt Hardy really makes these segments, and Jeff plays it off quite well to go along with it. So you can't, like, you can't say one is running it really good and the other isn't. In this case, both are running really well with these segments, and I find them thoroughly enjoyable. So, yeah, hopefully they. Uh, oddly enough, like I said, I was thinking that this should have ended a long time ago, but keep it up because they actually reinvigorated the entire thing. It's not. It has not been too bad as of late. To go along with uh, to go along with everything, so this brings me to the main event of the night, which was EC3 uh, against Michael Bennett, the Bound for Glory playoffs. You had the promo beforehand where they're kind of spouting off everything. As they ended the promo, Moose comes out 
and he comes out to his music and everything, so he slowly walks to the ring to go along with it. And then Bennett and uh, Moose beat down EC3, so they were playing off a rib injury throughout the entire throughout the entire match. Um, the match uh, was a thoroughly enjoyable match. The outcome, to be honest with you, uh, I get that Lashley's playing the heel, but the way they built up Michael Bennett to go along with it, uh, to go along with everything, like, it screamed for Bennett to win this match. It really did. It, in either in dubious fashion or something like that, it screamed for Bennett to win this match, and they decided to go with EC3 here. Like, I'm a big fan of EC3, I'm a big fan of his talk and everything, and how he, how he plays the character and everything in that sense, but for the sense of everything, like, in the terms of how I f felt it was going... This was a spot for Bennett to win because, you know, you have Dixie Cars like, I really don't like this guy, but he has a shot at the world title. They could have played off of that a little bit to go along with everything. And they had a lot that they could play off of. They went with EC3 uh, over that because, obviously, I guess they have plans on keeping Lashley as a heel. And that you do need a face care and uh, going into your big event. You can't have heel versus heel. You need a face versus heel uh, in that sense of everything, though. You could have probably just switched the roles of Lashley for, for that particular match. Uh, it wouldn't be as confusing as the AJ Styles Bully Ray match where everything was a heel. Going into it, it's like AJ was a heel because he's going to walk out on the company. Dixie was a heel because she was become like she was siding with the guy who was trying to take out the company for the longest time when it was aces and eights and everything. So it wouldn't be as confusing as that particular match, but uh, I could see where they wanted to go with that as well. They wanted to keep Lashley heel. They have EC3 as a baby face, so I get that to go along with it. Um, overall, like I said, this was a thoroughly entertaining show this week. I found it to be a lot of fun to watch uh, throughout the entire time. They, like I said, they have interesting builds going into everything. Uh, where are they going to go with this whole Drew Galloway EC3 thing to go along with it? Because now EC3 is going after the world title. Does this feud wait until that match happens and maybe EC3 gets the world title off of him and then they go into a program against each other for the title or something in that sense? We'll see where they go with everything about that uh, down the road here. Or maybe that's going to be his initial feud before he fully goes into a Lashley feud going into Bound for Glory. We'll see where they go with everything, uh, like I said. But overall, this was a thoroughly entertaining show. I, I enjoyed Impact this week. I found it to be a lot of fun. And we'll see how everything continues to run. Uh, continues to run. They're obviously going to be doing a set of tapings here soon. So... Uh, well, a live show and then a set of tapings to go along with it. So we'll see how everything ends out running. That is my review for TNA Impact Wrestling this week. I thank you guys for watching and have a great day.